By the time this video comes out, we're going to be at or very close to 6,000 subscribers. I'm going to do a Q&A video with you all to show some appreciation. Send your questions to askhandytips at gmail.com or leave it in the comments below. Feel free to ask anything about Iceborne, Monster Hunter, gaming in general, my disability, my personal life, but try not to get too personal with those questions. I also want to give away a free Handy Tips gaming shirt, so when you send in a question, you'll automatically be entered for the shirt. Thank you all, as always, for your continued support, and let's get to the video. The build that I used for the gameplay is a very simple one. The keys to the build are five things. Crit Eye is there to jack up our affinity and get the crit hits. Critical Boost, of course, is to get that extra damage from those crits. The built-in crit element from the Kiara weapons helps extensively increase that crit damage as well. The Safi 5 piece set bonus also helps to jack up our damage on multiple fronts through element and affinity increases. And finally, we have your weapon of choice as element. In this case, it was the absolutely ridiculous Kiar strong arm ice. Now I know you're going to see that evade extender maxed out and think, what are you doing? But I'm on a mission to spread the blessing that is evade extender, so don't bother saying anything about it because my faith cannot be wavered. But in all seriousness, I decided to have some fun with that and max out Evade Window as well. Just give Evade Extender a try sometime. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Through all of the gameplay, I'm using Kiar Element weapons, so you just replace the charm and switch the single element deco. If your chosen weapon does not have any slots, drop the one level of recovery up. All of the QR charge blades that I used have max custom upgrades, all of them being element except for the last two and that's your personal preference. They also have two element augments and a health augment. The whole it doesn't do enough damage so I don't use it reasoning for using a weapon seems a little ambiguous to me and I feel like there's some deeper reasoning that a person doesn't use it. For example, they're just not good with the weapon so instead they cover their ego with something like not doing enough damage. You're literally never going to hear somebody say that about the charge blade. The amount of damage that you can do from a single file discharge, and let me be clear, I'm talking about a single file specifically, is insane. Then you throw in the fact that you can rip off multiple files in a single attack, Charge Blade is never going to lack in the damage category. Honestly, when you break down every aspect and swing of that super amp, you'd be perfectly fine if they stripped everything away from the Charge Blade and left you with that single attack. Even the weakest, and by weakest I mean the lowest damage numbers, attacks of the Charge blade and sword and shield mode can still do on par damage and that has pushed even further to the forefront when you take the time to charge up that sword. Iceborne even added another way to do exuberant amounts of damage with the Savage Axe mode, but we'll get to that later. I'm by no means an expert with the numbers like the Monster Hunter math guys, but even if you're a subpar charge blade user, you still have the potential in your hands to rip off the most damage you've ever done in Iceborne on a single attack. As far as the complexity, you can absolutely say that Charge Blade is one of the more complex weapons, but in World, they've done an incredible job of streamlining things and making them more approachable and less intimidating. Once you get into the flow of how to charge your shield, your sword, your axe, 
and the shortcuts to doing so, you fall into a groove that spells doom for whatever monster you face. I was even oblivious to the fact of the benefits to axe mode that you get for having a charged shield, and still the numbers coming up were incredibly satisfying. In the discussion of whether a weapon does enough damage or not, charge blade is on the very far end of that spectrum. You know things are going to be fun when a weapon gets an entirely new buffed mode. Canceling out a super amp with your designated button of choice, whether it be L2, LT, or whatever you decide to use on PC, will see you swing your newly transformed axe back in a way into an even beefier mode known as Savage Axe Mode. Being in Savage Axe Mode will see you do much more damage with your axe. I love the introduction of this mode because it gives you a reason to hang out in Axe Mode a bit more. It's a very fun way to play the Charge Blade, and makes me think of the improvements made to the Switch Axe's Axe Mode because I feel like it had a similar effect on it. You can swing away with your axe doing pretty substantial damage with every one while also having the benefits of your chosen file type. You have a very fluid loop that you can go with too. Your rising slash into a double swing is an incredibly potent combo for elemental builds and the best part is you'll only be using a single file for that double swing after the rising slash. Do keep in mind though that you'll slowly but surely be losing your files while you're in savage axe mode. And another great thing is that you're literally one button combo away from whipping out that super amp if your shield is charged of course. Capcom handled this with an awesome amount of care. Prior to Iceborne, it was really easy to dub the charge blade as a one trick pony. Don't get me wrong that one trick was extremely potent, but it still does doesn't bode well for a weapon's replayability. The concept of the charge blade on paper is already awesome, having a sword and shield that can be combined to form a giant, hard-hitting axe. I'm just glad that they wised up to the fact that there should be incentive to use that giant axe more often. And man, did they ever hit the nail on the head. If you've been subscribed to the channel for a little while, you know I absolutely love cosmetic mods, whether that be armor, weapons, or effects. I have to say I'm a tiny bit disappointed when it comes to the charge blade. There's not many mods out there to choose from. Luckily, the models that are in-game are actually pretty solid. The Odegaron charge blades are honestly up near the top of my favorite weapon designs. I feel like the sword and shield is something that's pretty easy to make look cool. As far as the axe mode, it's kind of tough to make them look cool because the concept of it alone is nuts. So it'd be tough to keep consistency with sword and shield mode while making something really different for axe mode. And saying all of that, I'm still totally satisfied with just having a giant axe period, so it's all good. There's also the spectacular models like the Black Eagle as well that really steal the spotlight in a hunt. All in all, there's not a lot of mods to choose from, but at least least the end game models are pretty solid. The importance of great defense rings true with the charge blade. There are many aspects of your shield and using that shield well that will see you benefit in many ways. Right off the bat once you get that shield charged you not only become harder to move with two extra points of guard which will help positioning wise but you instantly improve the damage you're going to do with your axe. Having a flat damage buff to your axe mode will not only synergize well with the savage axe mode introduced in Iceborne but it also opens the door to the possibility of the most or one of the most devastating attacks in the game in the super amped elemental discharge. Another defensive technique that opens up your offensive capabilities is something that's a little hard to master, but it's a high reward for the risk you're taking. I'm talking about the beast of a move that is guard pointing. Think of it as a perfectly timed block. Say you're using an impact charge blade and you happen to pull off a guard point, you open up the possibility of actually knocking out a monster and we all know what happens when you do that. Be sure you have your shield charged so you can get the the added bonuses from your file type. Now we're going to talk about something that isn't a technique in particular, but still requires good timing to proc it, Offensive Guard. The skill Offensive Guard itself is incredible, but you pair it with a damage dealing monster like the Charge Blade, and you bring to life the idea of a great defense providing the best offense. With guard points being something you want to strive to use in those opportune moments, these two things, and having a charged shield, synergize very well. So I have to begin this section by saying that I'm definitely not impartial in this discussion because, as with every weapon I use, I gravitate toward building around the elemental weakness of a monster. This is no different with the charge blade, 
And boy, is it better than ever with these juicy Kiar weapons we got from that beautiful golden monster. Now, that's not to say I don't enjoy using impact charge blades. Who doesn't love guard pointing a monster onto its back? I'm an element lover, but I'm not insane. Because you'd have to be crazy to not get enjoyment out of using this type of charge blade. Having such a potent means of KOing a monster with every single swing or guard point that you land clearly has its benefits. The more time the monster spends on its side, the more time you have to charge files and rip off super amps. In terms of Team Element, it really got such a beautiful treatment with the Iceborne expansion. The first and obvious reason is the removal of the Element cap. You really can get to ridiculous levels of Element now. The best example of this is the QR Strongarm Ice. You can very easily get to over 1000 Ice on this bad boy, thanks to the fact that the QR weapons get the non-unique weapon treatment, opening up to beautiful custom up Upgrades. And now we don't even have to deal with these weapons looking like a Frankenstein monstrosity with the new unique layered weapon options. But with those custom upgrades providing such a thick chunk of element, your chosen element's attack charm, augmentations, built-in critical element, and extremely potent armor sets like Safi, team element is looking better than ever. But as I've said before, versatility is the key to keep people coming back to a weapon, and right off the bat, having the different file types is a great way of accomplishing that. You can dive right into the super amp spam playstyle or build more towards using Savage Axe mode. Team Element is in a great place, but honestly, Charge Blade as a whole is in an extremely good place. Alright, so we've come to the creme de la creme of the charge blade. This is what all the work has been for. Taking the time to charge up those files, get your shield charged up, charging the files again, charging up your axe, and then finally you get to lay out all of that blood, sweat, and tears into an element amped fireworks display of greatness. Well, that is if you can actually manage to land it, because when you don't, it's pretty devastating. Oh, but when you do, it's an absolutely fantastic feeling. I know that throughout the series for each weapon, I've said that there's a move out there, something along the lines that gives you a feeling of satisfaction matched by few things in the game. This is for sure that moment for the charge blade. And that's the thing, is that you're going to learn to be able to rip these things off at will and with ease, but that satisfaction you get from landing it doesn't wane or go away by any stretch. And man, with the Iceborne treatment, this move has only gotten even more delicious. The insane amount of damage you can get from each individual file is staggering. I mentioned before about the QR weapons and just how awesome they were, but combined with the element cap being lifted, powerful sets like the Safi armor and True Crit being built directly into the weapons, you can see file damage upwards to around 400 per file. I'm pretty sure we can all agree that the super amped elemental discharge was always a devastating attack, even in base world, but post Iceborne, it has only gotten better and better. I know I've seen people talking on forums about how it got nerfed in Iceborne, but I've yet to see anything even come close to that. This is the Kamehameha of attacks in Iceborne. You burst out so much damage from your files, but that's not to say that's the only part of this attack that does impressive damage. Even the swings on this combo do some pretty solid damage. The wide swing and the swing that actually emptied the files. If you're able to land that final downward swing onto the monster's head, you definitely won't be disappointed in the number that you see pop up. The better you get with the motion of the combo, the more damage you'll see. It takes time to really get a good feel for how far you need to be from the monster to connect with every bit of chunky damage dealing hit, but it's extremely satisfying when you do manage to get it down. The super amp is truly a move that is deserving of being called super. First off, if you got the title reference, please do let me know in the comments below. The charge blade gives you the opportunity to increase your power level well over 9000 in every aspect. Whether you're looking to improve your blocking capabilities, improve your damage with your sword or axe, or giving your sword a little bit more durability and preventing it from bouncing, the charge blade is an expert in just that, charging up your weapon's potential. Starting with the shield, you can cancel out of your amp discharge to give your shield some extra toughness as well as a buff to your axe damage which will come in handy especially in Iceborne. Now speaking towards the guard allocation with charge blade there's some people that think one point of guard is enough and then there's others that enjoy using guard three for extra comfort and less pushback from monsters attacks. 
when you charge your shield, you actually stack up two extra levels of guard. And if I'm misspoken on that, correct me in the comments below. But in these gameplays, I don't run any guard. I wanted to play more towards the damage capabilities of the charge blade, specifically the unbelievably awesome QR elemental weapons we've received. It's 150% up to your preference regardless. Now when you charge the sword, you're going to get a nice bit of mind's eye infused right into it, along with some extra damage as well. I've been getting into the habit of just doing this naturally when I charge my files, and it's definitely something I recommend. A very satisfying thing to do with the charge blade is going through the motions of charging your sword and perfectly placing that follow-up swing right onto the monster's head for a flinch or KO. As I said, I've been using the Kiar weapons a lot, and having this built-in mind's eye is clutch, because with most of these weapons, the sharpness runs through fairly quick, so you might find yourself dipping down into blue without knowing it, and in Master Rank, you won't be hitting much while you're in that level of sharpness. Charging up the axe will see you do even more damage with it, Simple as that. And who doesn't like more damage? Axe mode has become even more significant in Iceborne, so this comes at a perfect time. You have a lot more incentive to stick around in Axe mode now instead of just spamming super amps. Having Savage Axe Mode in place will see you swinging your axe with the power of your files behind every hit. Don't sleep on Savage Axe Mode. It's very potent and damage heavy and is a very viable playstyle now. You really would have a hard time finding many weapons in Iceborne that are in a better all-around spot than the Charge Blade. I'd honestly put it and the Longsword in an interchangeable top two as far as what weapons are in the best state post Iceborne. That's not to say there isn't things I'm sure people would be able to nitpick and come up with. They added a huge component with Savage Axe Mode to greatly expand a weapon that was a bit one-dimensional. To be fair, this one dimension came with immense damage potential. Now you have an entirely separate style of playing the Charge blade and you don't have to feel like you're making great sacrifices in doing so. Versatility is key and the charge blade has that now. It's a fun weapon to use and while it has a bit of a higher skill floor than most other weapons, that's not to say that you should be intimidated in any way when you think of taking up the charge blade. Once you get yourself in a good place of understanding how to charge the various components, familiarizing yourself with charging files and when to do so, you can move on to learning the explosive techniques like super amps and the perfect timing of guard points and the numerous routes you can take to do it. It's another weapon that greatly rewards you for the time that you put into learning it. You don't have to focus purely on offensive guerrilla tactics to improve your DPS. You can actually turn your tactical, well-tuned defensive actions into more damage, whether that be directly with skills like offensive guard and guard point KOs, or indirectly by absorbing the pushback of that attack the monster threw out, leaving itself open for a debilitating super amp. There's even a way to play for everyone. Whether you love the explosiveness of super amps or you want to swing around a giant energy filled axe, you can get even more specific to your preferences when it comes to file type. Do you want to stack the KOs with impact files or do you want to ratchet the damage up even more and take advantage of a monster's weakness with power element files? Regardless of what file type you decide to use, whether you decide to go Crazy Axe or Mad Bomber, one thing is clear, and that's the fact that Charge Blade is an incredible weapon. But that's going to be it for this one. The Charge Blade is a weapon that, much like the Longsword, I absolutely avoided like the Plague, but with the Iceborne update, I couldn't have had a better experience that'll have me coming back to the Charge Blade again and again for more fun. It's a damage-heavy weapon with plenty of defensive capabilities too, and those defensive capabilities, of course, set you up for even more damage, but they serve their purpose well. Don't forget to send your questions to askhandytips at gmail.com for a chance to win a Handy Tips gaming shirt. If you liked the video, please let me know with a thumbs up. As usual, I want this video to be a one-stop shop for people on the fence of using Charge Blade, so comment below what your thoughts are, and if you are a Charge Blade main, leave some tips down in the comments as well. Subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already for more Iceborne, Monster Hunter, and other gaming content. Dudes forever, have a good night, and happy hunting.